if you love your job, it's common to feel burned out from time to time. Yeah, even if you love, even it, if you, you love your job, you can still feel that way. Burnout is the mental and physical sometimes exhaustion that you feel when everything gets a little too overwhelming. There are strategies to recognize and avoid burnout, and UW Health senior psychologist Shyla Murkane is here to tell us more about Good it. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, what are the early warning signs of this? I mean, sometimes I feel this way on a daily basis. It's like a certain time of day and you just feel like, oh boy, you're on vapors. Exactly, and I think burnout can really start to catch up with us and recognizing those early warning signs allows us to intervene. There can be some physical things such as fatigue or muscle pain or aches, somatic complaints, or even that loss of energy. There can be some emotional things like part of why burnout is so problematic is we lose energy or momentum. We yeah. start to feel like we don't have the oomph to really make those changes. Um, and then there can be some behavioral things. We start to isolate and procrastinate. Maybe we're you know, eating too, many, much, too much junk food or drinking too much, so we're not taking very good care of ourselves. So this is more long-term stuff rather than, oh, it's four o'clock, I, you know, I need a cup of coffee. Exactly, it, it slowly creeps up. The analogy I like to use is a, a frog that jumps into boiling water will quickly jump out, and that's stress. If the stress is removed, we feel better, versus if you put a frog in a slowly boiling pot of water, it'll stay there and croak. And I think that's kind of how burnout is. And I've just here in my clinical practice over and over, people are tired and fatigued and feel like they don't have those inner resources of support. And many people just feel like, yeah, I'm burning out. That is such a great analogy. I'll remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that really good. explains yeah. it very, very well. But what are some strategies that you can use yeah, to so, avoid this? You know, if you start to recognize those signs, think about it as a catalyst to take action. And there are three things. One, we want to manage our energy. Oftentimes we talk about manage your time, time management, but I think that's actually the wrong way to go. Instead, think about we have so much energy in a day, almost like a, a gas tank, and there are things that we can do to gain energy, like filling up that gas tank. Maybe that's people, positive, or positive news information, or getting outside in nature, and then there are things that drain us. There are toxic people watching maybe too much negative news, um, maybe staying up too late and not sleeping. So do those energy gains and minimize those energy drains. And I would assume you have to have priorities. Yeah. Uh, and you have to identify yeah. those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can't be all things to all people. And sometimes we're taking on things that aren't ours to take on. So if we can really highlight what's important and in particular, what helps us grow and feel meaning and have things outside of work or outside of parenting or whatever major role you have. Because if you can fill up your life with those things that bring joy, make sure you're taking that self-care, putting yourself first sometimes, like putting that oxygen mask on first before, before others, then we tend to be stay resilient and bounce back quickly from those burnout moments. Maybe it's a mom thing, I don't know, but self-care seems very difficult. Yes. I, I, maybe it's just your instinct to put everybody else and everything else ahead of yourself. But you yeah. really, that, I guess that's really key. You gotta carve out even a little chunk for yourself. Absolutely, people often say, oh, it's selfish. But I say, if you're not taking care of yourself, who will? And mm -hmm. you can't be good to anyone if you're not first putting that oxygen mask on first, and then particularly sleep. We often are a sleep-deprived oh, yeah. nation, but if we can make sure we're prioritizing sleep, we're going to stay more resilient. And sometimes you just don't realize that you're burned out. I mean, <laughs> what, what would I say to Susan if I say, you know, listen, you're burned out. <laughs> I'd say you're not wrong. Right. Right. I love the humor that, that you're approaching it with. But to, yeah. rec to recognize that, that symptom, somebody say, you want to talk about this? Yes, and sometimes our loved ones are the ones that can give us that feedback. Maybe we've been too irritable or we're short or we're just frustrated. So, you know, having that good support team around us who can say, hey, you know, take some time or take that staycation, you know, to, to call in sick for a day and play hooky and go enjoy springtime can really you know, keep us making sure. Sometimes just a day is all you need. Yeah, we're flourishing. Yeah. Well, it seems like we're all under more pressure than ever. I don't know if the statistically, if anything, like, bears that out, but it just feels like everyone is under a lot of stress and pressure these days. Yeah, the, the most recent Gallup poll found that over 60% of workers reported feeling burned out. And if you look at the political environment, oh, two thirds of people are feeling stressed about the nation and over half both Republicans, Republicans and Democrats feel stressed about politics. So we're kind of bombarded, that's why 
we got to do that daily self-care, just daily small things. And does things like Facebook add to this? <laughs> yes, you know, oh, yeah. you know, there are these um, kind of bait clicks, you know, that we can have on social media, and all of a sudden we're reading something that really isn't good for us. So paying attention to where we get our news information and, and have a balance. You know, I love the duck story. You know, that's a positive thing. We want to pay attention to those too. Good advice as always. Yes. Thanks for I being here. I feel better. Today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. Great. Great to Happy see spring. you. And we have yeah. doctor's permission to call in sick. Oh. oh. <laughs> there you go. Doctor's orders. <laughs> That's right. See you next time. Bye-bye. Great to see you. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast.